Hello, everybody. What's going on? Today, July 20th, 2021. We're going to give you some Milan news of the day. Antonio is here with me, guys, the guru of the AC Milan transfer market, the Messi of uh, of Milan news. Antonio uh, joining us today is going to give us uh, all the updates. Antonio, how are you doing, my friend? Good. How are you, Roy? Also, I love your Messi comparisons. Like Donnarumma's the Messi of goalkeepers. You know? uh, yeah, he is, for sure. Yeah. When you I are never, the Messi yeah. of transfer market. I've never asked you, uh, do you think Messi is, the, is, in your mind, the best to ever play it? Or... Mm. Without making this too long of a discussion, just quick question. I don't know. That's a hard one to, to answer. Let me say um, no. Okay. I agree, but yeah. I think Pele is still the number one. I would say Maradona, but we don't need to d debate this right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So let's get right into it. Uh, Antonio, what, what, what's uh, happening in the world of AC Milan today that we can have a quick discussion about? What's up, Joel, Ibrahim? So... I think the first thing we have to do is just before we get into transfer news is just to talk about uh, Ivan Gazidis because he was diagnosed with uh, throat cancer today. So, um, wow. yeah, it's very so. Well, I would just want to you know say I wish him the best, and it, the yeah. the diagnosis is say that it should be curable. So it's that that is good news, but um, yeah, it's just very sad. So, so does this mean he's going to be absent from uh, from uh, the market stuff? So I believe that I saw reports saying that he would still try to be present in the market. Uh, it just depends. He'll just have to be flexible around treatment and, you know, his work. But he will still be involved to an extent. We don't know exactly how much, but he will be. Wow. Throat cancer, man. I wonder, is he a smoker, a heavy smoker? Who knows? Yeah. I don't know. All right. Um, well, so we start off right away off the bat with <laughs> pretty negative news. Yeah, I just have to say that because it's a Milan news, so you have to acknowledge that. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so the most interesting news of the day probably is the reports are saying that um, Kyo George oh, and – Milan has agreed to personal terms with Kyle George. Okay, good. Which is big because it does confirm all the speculation that Milan are interested in the player. Because when you agree to personal terms, the next step is negotiations with the club. And it looks like a, a bid may have been made. It's only been uh, cited by one source. But it looks like a bid of $7 million may have been made to Santos for him. Um, I'm guessing it's like six plus bonuses, but we don't know. I have to see further confirmation from this, but Milan are progressing and it's looking more and more, I would say 55 to 60% oh. chance that he joins. Um, as uh, of now. all right. So, so Kaya Georgia said that he wants to join AC Milan. Eh? Yes. And also. New, there is confirmation that he would choose Milan over Juventus now. Like that is confirmed that he is showed he's really preferring uh, Milan. Okay, good, good. This is yeah. good news. Um, do you see now personally? Do you see this happening? Uh, do you see that? What What are your? What do you think? Do you think this can actually happen or not? So can it happen? Yes, one hundred percent. Um. Do so. Everything is lining up. Milan, they've Maldini stated it. The club, different news sources have stated that we will try to get a young third striker this probably this summer. Um, that like that's what the club is looking for. The only other profile that I'm hearing right now is Giannis Antiste, who's a Toulouse 18 year old striker who plays what? with Amin, Amin Adli, but there's no oh. strong links with him. Um, so he's a League Two player, and Kyle George. Personal terms are agreed, and bids are being either made or close. Their negotiations ongoing. So I would answer you with, yeah, I see this happening. Um, 
as of now, the deal deal's been collapsed in any second, but as of now, it's he's in he's entering advanced talks, I would say, for Kyle George. So I would say right. at least sixty percent chance he joins. I always give you a chance we get him, chance we don't, just keep it simple. I would say sixty forty, but it could spike up like in the next day. So yeah, there's a good chance that he joins us. So we might have uh, Ibrahimovic, Giroud, and Kaya Georgia. Okay. Yeah. I don't. I don't mind that. I don't mind. I would rather have a homegrown player, but you know, let's see. I'm. I'm quite happy about that. All right. Good. Yep. Uh, thanks for all the viewers. By the way, I'm just seeing all every everyone showing support. So that's great. Um, the next interesting piece of news is about young youth players because. There was an article that I read today that actually was pretty interesting because um, it reminded me of the UEFA Youth League. So basically, this league ha- um, is for ch- Champions League teams. So if you're in the Champions League, you can your youth team can play. And Milan just made the Champions League for the first time in a while. So the Primavera are going to be in this youth league, it looks like. Um, and... That's probably why we're seeing a lot of these 17-year-old targets that are popping up on the list. So speaking of those targets, um, Warren Bondo, we don't have an uh, a official closed deal for him yet, but Milan did make a bid of 700000 They are now asking for $1.5 million plus a bit of bonuses, so they're trying to breach the, the, you know, the terms right now. Um, the deal is looking like personal terms agreed, like I've already said, three years plus two-year extension. Um, and it's looking like he, I would say, extremely high. I'd say 85, 80, 85% looking like he will sign by the end of the week. Good. So, and yeah, and then there's also a new name, which was surprising. It was a, a new um, 17-year-old midfielder who I have not seen any videos, I no highlights of, because it just happened recently. But there's a player who's um, plays for uh, Jank, which is a or Gent, if I yeah yeah if I've, yeah in uh, Belgium, 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 and he is 17 years old. His name is Pierre Duomo, like D. It's hard. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but he is a yeah. another similar style player to Bondo and it looks like me and he actually dropped a hint on his Instagram. He actually um, looked, there was a Instagram post about the rumor of him going to Milan and he actually posted it on his Instagram and with those, with the eye emoji. So it looks like he's, there is truth to that deal because he's basically confirmed it and Milan have rapidly started scouting him. So it looks like the scouting department is trying to pick up these really young players um, to put them Good. to the Primavera team for the UEFA Youth League. So exactly. that's interesting. Very good. And it's very important that we follow what the youth team does because a youth team now will be playing in the Champions League, in the youth Champions League for such – it's been you, – you said it's been such a long time. We really got to see how well they perform because, guys, this is the future of AC Milan. This is the future of AC Milan. I'm so like this news almost refreshes me because I'm so happy to see Milan spend on the youth because I said it on this channel a million times. That's how you make a big team. You you create them when when you're young. You build them up. You 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 teach them young what it's like to be a Milanista, and then when they're ready, they come in and they kick ass. Excellent news so far. Good. Yeah. Except for the Gazidis news, but everything else is good. Yeah, the Gazidis news, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then it's just interesting to note, it looks like Milan are really trying to improve the Primavera. I'm, I would, at this rate, I would expect some attacking players even before the Mercato ends to reinforce the Primavera because we lost Olzer in the deal with Brescia, and he was our best forward player. Um in the Primavera, so we're going to oh, need to, yeah, and we are going to need to probably restore the attack, so if you got, so I would expect more um, small, like really young players to join the Primavera before the summer ends. Okay. Okay, um, the rest, so next player to talk about, if you want to answer, 
Yeah, if we want to answer questions, I was going to say Vlasic. Um, yeah, okay, let's answer these questions real fast, and then we'll keep on going. So what yeah. do you guys think of Ordio Zala being a backup to uh, Calabria? Um, I I don't know. I, I, liked the, I liked more the idea of Dalo. I hope Dalo happens. And if we get Dalo, I'll be happy with that. That's my, my answer to that. What about you? So... Just an update on that really quick. Not much news, but basically Milan are still trying to sign Dalo. They're still trying to negotiate, and they're also interested in Odrio Zola. So one of the two, they're interested in those two players. I don't know if this means that Kalulu doesn't have the full trust yet to be the second right back, but it looks like they're looking for opportunities to still get another right back So because they want plenty of depth, remember. Uh, with all the competitions. So we don't know. We could either get one of the two players. We could get no player if we're confident in Kalulu. Um, or we could get somebody else like the Valencia player that was linked with us. So we don't know. But personally, I would, I, I've seen Dalo play. And I think he's pretty solid, especially as a backup. So I would hope that we sign him. As, okay. That's just yeah. what I would like. And here, as far as Katrinho Sabi serves Blazic, I would go for Blazic. That's my uh, opinion on that. Yeah, um, I would go for Vlasic also. Sabitzer hasn't impressed me too much in his highlights. People, some either people say he's amazing or people say he's not that good. Um, Coutinho has been good, but too many injuries, too high salary, unfeasible. And Fabrizio Romano, I think today shut down any possible rumors of that Milan have been interested in Coutinho because no uh, talks have been held with Barcelona. That's a small piece of news. So I don't think that's happening. Personally, I go Vlasic, and we can talk about Vlasic soon after we answer some of the questions. Okay. From what I heard, Kalouz is seen as a center back, not a right back. He can play both. He can play both. I don't, I don't, personally, I don't like him that much as a right back. But he can play as a center back, and maybe eventually, when he grows a little bit, gets a little bit more experience, he could also play as a CDM. Who knows? Guys, the most knowledgeable Milan fan that the universe has ever created is here, Lucas. What do you guys uh, do? You, oh, okay. So, yeah, the game is going to be against Modena. Um, okay, so let's keep on going. Uh, Antonio, keep on sure. going. But to answer that, so I haven't seen. I don't know if you guys have found confirmation that Maldonado is going to happen, but we know that Juventus is canceled because Milan never confirmed the Juve, the Juve game. It was just speculation that they were trying to organize it. So I haven't seen confirmation from Maldonado yet. So they're probably still trying to organize it now. So only it'll only happen if once they confirm it um, as official. So we don't know yet, but that's what they're trying to do. Um, and then, so to talk about Vlasic a bit, there's con- there's been continued confirmation that he is trying to force his move. Um, I think CSK Moscow, the club, um, that's good that Molden is official, by the way. Um, the club has hinted at this, saying that the situation is clear. So, like, talking about the situation of Vlasic. And he's been missing at different training sessions. Um He's really trying to force his way out. Um, so it depends. It's how much the club will budge on Milan's initial offer or if Milan will answer back. But he is the number one target um, for, uh, for that. Now, yesterday there was an article that came out that Blazic, when he was asked this question, are you joining Milan, he, he flat out said no. What, what What is your take on that? So I didn't see that article Um, I feel like I would have seen it. I don't know where, do you remember where you read it from? Uh, I could have been uh, from Italian sources, could have been Italian sources. Yeah. I haven't seen any, like on my sources, I haven't seen that. He said, no, um, that'd be very surprising because from everything that I've seen so far, it looks like he wants to join Milan. Um, he follows the team on Instagram. He's, you know. He's not committed to Moscow. He doesn't want to join the Premier League. There's only a couple leagues where he could go. So you're talking Bundesliga, uh, Spain, Serie A, and Milan are the number one team linked with him. 
So I don't see, and we've made an offer for him. So I don't, I would think that that was, I wouldn't really believe that unless I see it as like confirmed true. Yeah. He was asked, I think after a, a friendly or something. Um, um, but uh, yeah, even yeah here, uh, what's his name? Oh, okay. Okay. So Rebic, uh, uh for Ballon d'Or says, no, you misunderstood it. They asked him, do you have an agreement with Milan? And he said no and smiled. He smiled. We know what that smile means. Yeah. So that is, as of now, there is no confirmation of personal terms. Um, I don't believe so, but he would probably accept whatever Milan make an, an offer. So it's looking like he really wants to join. Yeah, the, I just saw the Maldonado friendly is confirmed. So thank you for that update. Um, and um, Antonio, you're going to be able to do watch along for that? Unfortunately, I don't think I can because I have to go on a trip um, over the weekend, so I cannot confirm that I will be able to unless something, my plans get changed. Um, so yeah, we'll Unfortunately, see. guys, it doesn't look like we'll be able to do a watch along for that. Um, I'm not available. Nobody's available. So. But um, I will. If something changes, I'll let you know, and we can do a watch along. Um, okay. I'll, I'll just keep you updated with that. But it All is... Right. Yeah, so it will be it will be played on Saturday, um, and yeah, three days and twenty hour eighteen hours away on Milan's Instagram. Uh, and before game. you move on to the next uh, piece of news, I want to respond to Mohamed Sajid, who says Pobega is an amazing player, and I think he should we should keep him. So we have four central midfielders instead of three. Gassi Benasser, Tonali, Pobega. 100%, Mohamed, I totally agree with you. In my opinion, from that last uh, uh, friendly we saw, Pobega was the best player on that pitch. This guy is going to be a future national team player. I think Milan is uh, is crazy if they sell him. So I really hope that he impresses on Saturday. We're going to see him again on Saturday. So I hope he impresses on, sta- on Saturday. Um, Antonio, a lot of people here are asking about the right wing. Here someone asked about Ziyech. Any news on that? So, as of now, um, there, like recently, there's not much news. We know there was an article I read today that basically reiterated the point that Pioli has told the club that Domenico Berardi is his uh, dream, is his first choice right winger. Uh, there, I'm, I'm not. I don't want to make any news up, so I'm just going to tell just be honest and say that there isn't any recent links. Um, there's, there has been links with Ziek actually um, just confirming that Milan are interested in him, but it would be difficult as of now, considering that Chelsea value him at around like 40 million or at least 30 million and Milan are not going to spend that much money on Ziek. Um Ziek, if you, there, I'm not saying there's not a chance that we will sign him because if you wait, um, towards the end of the Mercato, like in August, where a lot of the deals usually happen, things can change and different uh, circumstances can be made by the club. So if, if Milan were to get Ziyech, um it is a possibility and it would probably happen towards the end of the Mercato if it did happen. Right now, I would say just because Pioli is more interested in Berardi, that I would say there's more of a ch- if Milan were to surprise us with a dream or really good quality right winger, it would be Berardi over Ziyech, but Ziyech is very possible because Maldini and the management like him a lot as well. So both are both are the main possibilities. I'm not really seeing any other right wingers um, because these are the two right wingers with a lot of quality that Milan are looking at. But right now it's too hard to tell if any of these happen and there's more of a chance there's not like significant evidence that we will get these players. Right. And let's also not forget that Milan doesn't need to pay cash straight away for these big players, you know? Like they can they always do deals. I pay you 10 million this year, 10 million next year, 15 million this year, and then these deals that we've seen, they can change. Um, so everybody here, well, everybody, two people here are saying that Berardi is the biggest fraud in Italy now, and only Italians think he's good. Uh, so Lucas uh, uh, is uh, 
is going a little bit crazy over Berardi. No, not Berardi, please. A lot of negative uh, uh, opinions regarding Berardi, but no, Berardi is the best choice for AC Milan today for that right wing. I agree with Pioli, um, if that is true. And I think that Berardi, if it happens, it can happen at the end of August. Yeah, that's when we'll see. Oh, okay. Lucas, that's also a good point. I saw Tete. Um, yeah, he's right. We are linked with him. The news comes from Radio Rossonera, who they've just posted it, or they've mentioned him briefly. Tete, we were first linked with him back in January around that time, the winter mercato, but Milan were never going to make a substantial uh, offer for him. I, If we signed Tete, I would honestly be very happy. Um, he is Brazilian. Um, he plays for Shakhtar Donetsk. He is right winger. Um, he played in the Champions League, and he actually had really good performances against Real Madrid. So he's... Like I said, like I said, I think I already said twenty-one years old. Um, he's looking very promising. He can take people on one-on-one. -on -one. He's fast. And he can dribble. So I would definitely love to have him on my team. Where, to be honest, where's he from? Where's he from? He's Brazilian. Yeah. Uh, interesting fact about Shakhtar, they actually have a very strong Brazilian scouting yeah. network. So you see a lot of the players like um, Douglas Costa. And other players yeah. come from Shakhtar. Shakhtar is always a difficult team to face in Europe because we have so many Brazilian players. And as we all know, Brazilian players are usually above average. They're always very good. So, um, But as of now, I still would, just to reiterate the right wing, the main options, Tete is scouted by the Milan management, but it, lo it looks like the more the main options will be um, Berardi and Ziyech. But the price is different. So if Milan needed to, would be to go for a cheaper player than Tete would be a good possibility in the future. Let's wait for the links to come out though. So we have to see. Listen, this is why I want Berardi at Milan. Okay. Okay. Lucas, this, I'm going to say this, this is for Lucas. This is why I want Berardi at Milan. Number one, because he is amazing. He scores goals, assist. He's got personality. He's got character. He's an Italian national team player. And number two, because he's an Italian national team player and he needs to fight for a spot in the World Cup, his direct opponent is Chiesa, a player that most likely will win the Ballon d'Or in the future. So getting Berardi at Milan, fighting for a spot in the World Cup, only serves us uh, good. Um, about Ziyech, my, one second. About Ziyech, my only issue with Ziyech is the AFCON. And that month, we need our players. We can't. We we can't go for so many African players at this point because we're going to lose all these players between January and February. Yeah, just wanted to add uh, the statistics for Tete is that he scored six goals, three assists. But, you know, those numbers, I, I mean, those, which are solid many, numbers. Out of how many? Uh, I do not have that number. I will pull that up. Um just to double check, but I believe Ziek, remember, he had a not the best season as well. So the qual yeah, yeah. it doesn't always yeah, yeah. you know he I would say Tete may be more of a safe choice, but ZS ZH has the quality. Right, right. Um uh, okay, so let's answer some of these questions. Let's let's keep on going. So ZH news, guys, we've already answered that. Uh Antonio has already said what's up with ZH uh right now. Nothing yet, as far as the right wing. Opinions on Kaya George. We already spoke about Kaya George. Uh, if Kaya George comes to Milan, we are happy. Uh, Brazilian players tend to be very good. And, um, you know, the ceiling is very high for a 19-year-old Brazilian player that in Brazil is playing as a starter in Santos, one of the biggest teams in Brazil. And, guys, Brazilians, when it comes to football, they're not the last ones, okay? Actually, they're maybe the first ones. So uh, they know what they're talking about. If they think this player is going to be something special, I think uh, Kyle George can become something special. Now, his contract, right, uh, Antonio is ending. That's why he is cheap, right? He's on the cheap. Otherwise, he'd be much more expensive. Yep. Um, also, a couple things. Yes, that's also Brazil – you know, COVID situation. There's also that. 
Um, but more like, yeah, more so that he's expiring in January. Um, but Milan are looking more and more like they're going to go for him now um, in the summer. Look, we already talked about him earlier, just to reiterate that. Uh, also, um, Tete only played 24 games. And this is just in the league. And then he played six Champions League games and scored one and got an assisted one. And he was in a difficult group against Inter, Real Madrid, and Borussia Mönchengladbach. For Shakhtar, it was a difficult group. So those are good stats, I would say. Oh, hold on, hold on. Hans, he's not in his prime. He's 26, 27. He's 26, right? But are these 26? Yeah, but are these should be going on 27 right now. Okay, so Berardi has 26, 20, uh, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 27, 30. August 1st. Guys, this guy still has almost 10 years, nine years of, of top football. Huh? Uh, like uh, the ceiling does not end. For people who think that the ceiling ends at 27, 28, you're 100% wrong about this. All right. Like the players, the mature players that kick ass the most are the players that are between 29, 32. That, that's the, that, that window right there between 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. That's when a player is, is at its maximum capacity. So um, uh, Berardi still has a few years to get there. We should exploit that. Yeah. I'm also and anybody seeing... who thinks differently, you're wrong. Period. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I'm also seeing comments like about um, the youth players that uh, we already – I talked about Pierre Duomo earlier in the beginning of the video and that we're going to yeah. stack our Primavera. These are real rumors because Milan are trying to um, stack their Primavera for the UEFA Youth League, which I mentioned, but we I don't want to get too much into that. I don't have um, too much more time, but I do want to cover Romagnoli because some news came out about him today. So I just wanted to just to say that the news, um, different news sources have confirmed that Milan do not want to sell him uh, and he does not want to leave. So it is he wants to stay and fight for a place in the team. Um, the only problem with this is that his contract expires uh, very soon. So if he will not renew, it looks like we're going to be losing him for free. So that is that is the main issue. But as of now, there's no rush to sell him. Guys, did you see this news about uh, Romagnoli Barcelona saying that they'll give us Pjanic and Coutinho for Romagnoli? Um, I think so. Any news between about Coutinho hasn't been confirmed. Um, I don't think. Yeah, Barcelona. They are in a. They do have financial issues, so they're trying to offload players. I was going the. I was going to maybe talk about Pjanic because he is a possibility. There's no strong links yet, but because his value will be very um, easy to obtain him. The only problem is that his wage is pretty high, I believe, around $7 million, So Milan are not going to be paying that wage. But, yeah, these are just ideas. Nothing, No concrete talks with Barcelona yet. But listen, let's just uh, spend one minute on this. I know you got to go uh, real fast. Mm -hmm. But uh, Coutinho and Pjanic for Romagnoli is massive. Okay. If we get Pjanic and Coutinho for Romagnoli, that puts Milan in a whole different level, guys. I, a lot of people were skeptical. I mean, a lot of people. Some of the people that commented on this were skeptical. But we have two world class players coming in for a player that the Milan. Universe already has already put his head on a spike. Um, if that was true, I think that would have been very positive. Yeah, I don't think it's true to uh, to that, like both players, like these are just ideas, but uh, this is an exaggeration. Okay, all right, what else? Anything else? Um, that's the main news I see. If anyone, if there's any last minute questions I can answer. Before I head off, um, I'm down for that. And yeah, it looks like like we don't have too many uh, Mercato updates besides the inter well, interesting Kyle George main main update and um, youth players also. So that's you know are progressing in those positions. Okay. Yes. So we have Kyle George. We have the, the youngster uh, Duomo. 
so yeah, so the, to to summarize the bad news, we started off with the bad news today. Even Gazidis has has throat cancer, something very serious. Uh, now the report said that you know he, he is is going to be cured. We spoke about Caio Jorge. Antonio, you think 60% is going to come to fruition. Um, and um, then we spoke about the two youngsters coming in because AC Milan is going to finally be performing in the Champions League, the youth system. Guys, this is great news that Milan is investing in the youth system. And then, uh, and then that's it, really. I mean, as far as anything else more concrete for the day, right? Yep, um, we talked about Vlasic a little bit, saying that he keeps trying to push for a move. Um, so that he's our number one attacking midfielder target. Any Luis Alberto news? No updates on him. He should be back in training right now um, with Lazio and Saudi. Is I think Lazio still have to evaluate who they want to keep, who they want to sell. He's playing four three three. He doesn't usually play with a trecortista, so he's interest. He may offload him, but they're asking prices too high. So, yep. Oh, also there is that reminded me of Leal because there has been a bit um, of there has been a bit of links with him and Wolves in the past, and can, I've seen another report from Portugal that said that there is a conversation. There are conversations about him with Wolves, so that could be. And Milan are open to the idea of selling him if they get a good offer. So it's interesting to look at that. Anything new regarding Theo Hernandez and his links to PSG? Um, yeah, there's actually, I just saw an article pop up um, about that. But it looks like PSG are still interested in him. We don't know what their intentions are of their bid. Because it looks like they're bidding, they in the past have verbally offered around 50 million for him but yeah now that they've spent money on other positions and wages we don't know what they will offer um but milan it's important to note that they've said 70 to 80 million is the lowest sub bid that we'll talk about so we we'd only lose him if they put down that much money for him and as of now it's not likely but they're still there and they're still interested in him personal terms Personal terms have been agreed between them, right. but that only means that they put a bunch of money in his face and he said that right. he would play. Verbal, right now, verbal, these are all verbal agreements, nothing else. Yeah, and he did say, um, and right now Teo makes around like one, one and a half million a year. So his, he's looking to improve his right. contract situation. So listen, listen, we really have to fucking be realistic about this, guys. Um, right now, PSG is the hot team to be in, you know? These guys have all the superstars. They have all the money. So right now, that's a, a really shiny, a really shiny gold piece that everybody wants a piece of. And when they come calling, you really ha can't. You really have to be realistic that a lot of players might want uh, to to end up there. Uh, now, this is definitely true, Lucas. Uh, uh, Lucas, Lucas, do you think Leonardo? Is not going for our best players. Come on, Lucas. Let's be realistic. So just to just to bring more clarity, I'm not saying that Teo is going to go to PSG. There is a very very high chance that he stays with us, like extremely high. But remember that PSG have as much funds as you know you can imagine. So they are always they're interested in another left back, and he is like the be the best left back for them. And one of the best left backs in the world. So they're like just like Akimi, they if they want to go and spend that much money, there's always that possibility. But Fabrizio Romano just said that he is most likely to stay. So of course I believe that he's more likely to stay. However, though, there is always that possibility that these big teams can go and offer big contracts and lots of money. And you saw that these same news reports were saying that Donnarumma was likely to stay for in the second half of the season up until right. recently. So and there's always these possibilities. Yeah, we have to. A lot of people are probably asking about the no, it's not just a. a Roy, yeah, I, I do have. I'm. I am going to sign off because it's that time. And yeah, if if you guys are still on, I'll jump back on later. But uh, we're going to close. Thank you, Antonio, for the updates. Much appreciated. 
Uh, we will do another one tomorrow if you're available and just uh, talk about the Milan news for tomorrow. All right. Thank you, guys.